Welcome, in this video we are going to implement the nice rectified flow paper. So that's a very interesting paper, so that's a new way or a new technique for training uh, diffusion models. There are uh, a few papers or a few concurrent work that also uh, propose this new approach. And actually this new approach has been used for training stable diffusion tree. Um, so yeah, it's very promising. Um, yeah, it's, it seems now to be like the go-to approach for training diffusion models. Uh, and it also is very, uh, yeah, it has also a lot of, uh, of uh, other applications. Uh, the main uh, benefit is that the, uh, the base distribution should no longer be a well BF distribution, such as a Gaussian distribution. Um, yeah, but uh, I invite you to have a look at the paper. In that video, is always really mainly focused into the uh, implementation. But if you're interested uh, into uh, more like paper review uh, or more like, uh, yeah, uh, um, high level or mathematical overview of the paper, we can do that as well. Um, so yeah, these are the results we're going to get by the end of this video. So basically that's a reproduction uh, of figure, uh, I think it's down below. Um, it, I think it should be figure, it's very deep into, yeah, okay, it's a, that's this figure, figure seven. So we're going to reproduce, uh, yeah, the uh, first column. Uh, I think we're going to use a L2 penalty. So basically this is uh, this figure we're going to reproduce. You can see that we reproduce it pretty uh, faithfully. So basically we have two distribution, one in purple and one in red, and we're going to learn to, go, to move from one distribution to the other one. So basically one of the distribution is the, uh, we can assume that it's the distribution that we know, that we have uh, access to at inference time. We can sample from it easily. And the other one is the distribution we want to be uh, able to sample to. Uh, well, we want to sample uh, from that distribution on using the base distribution uh, we can map the base distribution to the target distribution. So, okay, let's have a look directly to the implementation. As always, we're going to use uh, PyTorch for the implementation. Uh, and, uh, yeah, basically, uh, here we have a very simple toy problem, as you've seen. So, we're going to use the MLP as the backbone for the diffusion model. Um, so, basically, yeah, we're using MLP with a context. So, basically, uh, it's a conditional model. Uh, and the conditioning will be the time t uh, at which we, uh, we do the denoising step. So we have a simple MLP with a, uh, yeah, two hidden layers with a, tangent, with a hyperbolic tangent as activation function. Uh, on the forward pass is very simple. We concatenate the input on the uh, conditioning and we uh, feed that to the neural network. Of course, there are more, uh, uh, more advanced conditioning scheme. Uh, for example, they are used uh, in units, for example, or uh, nowadays like stable diffusion tree is no longer using CNNs, it's using transformer, transformer based models. So all uh, transformers. Uh, on the uh, yeah, uh, specific conditioning scheme, a bit more uh, advanced than just feeding the, uh, than just concatenating the input on the context. Uh, okay, so that being said, now we can move on to the data set. So the data set is very simple. We take two distribution. So during training, we need the base distribution on the target distribution. On that in front time, we don't have access to the target distribution. We only have access to the base distribution. What is really nice with, um, with rectified flows is that you can go from you train the model to go, for example, from distribution one to distribution two, but then at different time you can do both. You can go, you can both go from distribution one to distribution two, but you can also go from distribution two to distribution one. So basically, uh, yeah, you um, you are not constrained in uh, in uh, yeah you you are not constrained in, into uh, into going in one direction. You can go into both direction, which is a very uh, a nice asset. Here basically we are feeding no, not really like independent, like unpaired distribution, like for example a cycle GAN, but we are feeding paired distribution. So before end, before feeding the data to the data set, we need to make paired, uh, paired data. So we are to each data point Z, let's call them Z0 and Z1, we uh, make pairs of Z0 and Z1. Uh, but uh, it doesn't need to be a paired data set, that can be just a random uh, data coming from uh, two di three different distribution, but we just need to pair them uh, before training. Um, actually, that's all the pseudocode is described in the paper. Actually, it's not really, uh, we could actually design the data set uh, without that constraint that will work fine as well. Uh, okay, then we have the length of the data set, which is of course the, uh, the length of each distribution. So basically distributions are uh, tensors, um, PyTorch tensors, and therefore we return the number of elements in the tensor. 
and then the get item function just uh, yeah uh, returns the uh, the data at the uh, at the uh, given index. Okay, uh, now we can create a distribution to well uh, we can create a function to generate the data set. So to generate our distribution, as you have seen, um, yeah, as you've seen, these are uh, multimodal distribution. So basically, what we are going to feed are the modes, so the centers of each uh, of each cluster, uh, and then uh, for each mode, we are going to sample a multimodal, uh, not a multimodal, but uh, a multivariate um, Gaussian distribution. Uh, and then offset the uh, Gaussian distribution by, by the mode. So basically what we are doing, we are sampling from the um, multivariate Gaussian distribution, and then we sample one of the modes from the, uh, the modes we received as input, and then we offset the Gaussian distribution by the mode, and therefore we will sample one, one point, for example, uh, so here from the eight uh, purple modes, we are going to sample uh, yeah, one, uh, one point uh, somewhere over there. Okay, so when this is done, we can uh, append the sample data point to the data set, and then the data set is a list, so we can uh, convert that into a NumPy array by uh, yeah, converting uh, very simply using the np.array function. Uh, then we can uh, move to the most interesting part of that uh, video, it's the uh, function to train the rectified flow model. Um, yeah, we take as input rectify flow, uh, its optimizer to train it, then the training uh, data loader, the number of epoch we want to train for, uh, on the uh, epsilon constant, we are going to discuss that in a moment. So we trade off the number of epoch, then we uh, sample um, uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the data point Z0 and Z1 from the uh, batch, so basically data from the first dis distribution and data from the second distribution, uh, and then we can uh, push them to the device. We sample uh, some point T randomly, so T between 0 and 1, so basically at zero, that means we are at data point uh, zero, Z zero, and at Z one, we are at data point, uh, when T is equal to one, we are at data point Z one. So basically we are creating ZT, which is an interpolation between Z zero and Z one. Uh, yeah, on T is trampled randomly between zero and one. And basically here, what we want to, to um, so again, I, I won't dive into the paper, just focusing on implementation. If you want to learn more about diffusion models, mainly like the, uh, uh, the way to train like uh, vanilla diffusion models. If you're interested in stable diffusion one, stable diffusion two, I have a full course about that. I will put the link in the description. Um, but yeah, here let's come back to the uh, to, to the code. So basically, we interpolate ZT between zero and Z one. Then we uh, we create the target drift force. So basically, the the drift force to go from Z zero to Z one, and then the neural network is predicting that dr uh, drift force on the loss is super simple. We take the target. Uh, the, we take the, the MSC loss between the target and the prediction. Uh, so basically, here with rectified flows, we are predicting the drift force. Basically, we are solving a differential equation, and we predict the drift force. And then once we know it, we can um, we can solve the uh, differential equation with Euler method. But we're going to do that in a moment. Uh, and then we can do a gradient step uh, by backpropagating the loss. So as you've seen, that's super super simple. Uh, in comparison to other like uh, well to uh, to the uh, vanilla uh, diffusion model loss uh, that's much more simple. Uh, okay, so here when we uh, sample, so basically we need to uh, to solve the differential equation that uh, relates z zero to z one. So basically we are starting from uh, here the way we've uh, implemented that function. We are starting from p uh, pi zero, so from distribution one. And we want to go to distribution two. So here we just create a list of samples. So basically that will allow us to um, to track over time. Uh, the um, basically little by little we'll go from distribution one to distribution two. And in the samples we are going to uh, save the full path, the full trajectory. So basically we iterate over t. So big T is the number of um, uh, of step to. Uh, to 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 to, appro to solve the uh, the uh, differential equation, the number of uh, yeah of step for the Euler method. So basically, what what we do, we um, we create t that is equal to uh, dt time i. So for example, let's say that big t is equal to ten. T at the uh, in the first situation we equal to zero point one, then zero point two, zero point three, and so on and so forth. Then we uh, predict the drift force uh, using the rectified flow. 
and then we uh, update the um, the trajectory. So we take the last value and we do plus drift uh, prediction times dt. So basically, we are uh, yeah, it's very uh, simple. Uh, 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 using a simple uh, uh, method to solve a differential equation that's a bit like a rectified uh, moving uh, like a, in French we say M MRU I believe in English, in, uh, English it's uh, you know like uh, rectified uh, well uh, like uh, x is equal to uh, x is 0 plus t times t plus uh, v times t uh, okay anyway let's move on sorry for that uh, okay, so then once we've uh, created the trajectory, which is a list, we can convert that into a torch dot tensor, uh, and therefore we use the concatenation function to concatenate all those uh, lists into a, a tensor. Okay, once this is done, we can finally put all the pieces together. So now we have all the functions we need to, uh, and we can assemble them. Um, so yeah, we've done most of the work, and you can see it's very very easy. If you're interested in two diffusion models, because uh, yeah, that's even though that's uh, already maybe uh, let's have a look at the date of the paper i think it's one year old yeah okay so even more like it's uh, 18 months old so even though it's 18 months old uh, like the uh, the standard way or the vanilla way to train different models are still used a lot uh, so it's not uh, it's still not like the de facto uh, but uh, yeah it's still uh, it's used a lot for example again stable diffusion tree used that uh, way to train different models uh, but yeah, you can see it's very simple. But what I was gonna say is that uh, if you are interested in two different models, more generally, I have a lot of other videos on my channel. I invite you to have a look at them, and we'll see that uh, sometimes it's uh, usually it's much more complicated than that. So okay, so we create the batch size, the data set size. We're going to train on 10k images, well, 10k data points because we're not working with images. We're going to train for 2,000 epochs, and as in the paper, figure seven. We're using a weight decay of 0 0.01. Uh, okay, so basically here we're just preparing our data set. So we, here we, pre we, we uh, sample the theta, uh, co so, so using polar coordinates, we sample the theta angles for each mode. So basically you can see that we have, uh, yeah, we have some modes at theta 0, 60, 120, uh, 180 degrees. So basically we prepare the theta coordinates of the um, of the modes, and then we are going to uh, uh, transfer or to uh, transform those uh, angles into like uh, um, x y coordinates. Um, yeah, so basically just taking the co the sine on the cosine, uh, and basically with two distribution, one with a radius of uh, twelve and one with a radius of five. So basically, uh, the red dots are with a radius of five. That's the first distribution, and the purple have a um, radius of twelve. Uh, yeah, and we are using a storm deviation of 0 0.5 for both uh, distributions. So again, okay, once we've done that, we can prepare training. So we can create our MLP, so our backbone for the diffusion model. We can create our optimizer. Where, so we are using Adam again with a weight decay of uh, 0 0.5, a learning rate of 5e minus 3. We can create the data set using the two uh, generated distribution, and then we can start training. You will see that training uh, is very fast. But of course, with a very simple MLP on a very simple uh, data set. On here, what we're doing, so basically, I'm, I'm splitting, basically, I'm uh, re regenerating a new um, testing data set. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go from distribution pi 0 to pi 1. So basically, pi 0 was with a radius of 12. So we're going to go from the uh, purple dot to the red one. So basically, yeah, we assume that you can sample the purple. Um, uh, dots very easily. Uh, for example, that could we uh, in another world in another implementation, pi zero could be the Gaussian distribution, and the red dots could be, for example, images. So basically, we have, we can easily sample from the purple distribution, but not from the red one. And therefore, we sample data points from the purple distribution, and we use them to generate uh, the um, the red distribution. So here, basically, what I'm doing, I am splitting. Uh, when I'm generating this new test set, so I, I don't want to use uh, pi zero, otherwise uh, th those will be training data and there might be some overfitting. So I'm going to generate new data points that the model has never seen. Um, but basically, before generating them, I'm splitting the modes in two. So uh, basically, I want to do that 
so that I can plot some lines in, uh, uh, in green and some other in blues. So first I'm generating, I'm, uh, generating a data set with only three modes uh, on sampling new data points from them. And then we are doing the same for the purple, uh, well, for the other, uh, other trees so that you can uh, plot in, uh, in blue and in green. Uh, okay, so uh, basically we are splitting the theta in two parts. So we are taking one theta over two, and then we do the same but with an offset of one. Uh, we are generating the modes. Once we have the modes, we can sample new um, a new test distribution. So new, new data points from the test distribution. Well, new data points from the base distribution. That will be uh, our, our test. Uh, we can see that is a test distribution. We are going to sample new data points. Uh, and then we can uh, plot them using plt.scatter. Uh, so basically, this is what you see on that figure, the purple and the red uh, dots. And what we are going to do now in the code is to add those lines, those blue and green lines. So basically, here, maybe there, there is a better way to do that in Matplotlib. But here, uh, a no-brainer, no or maybe a, a way to do it without spending too much brain energy uh, is just to plot each line in individually. Uh, on basically, so basically, yeah, we are plotting the trajectory. So basically, here it seems it looks continuous, but basically these are lots of small, uh, uh, small sections. Uh, on the four, we see uh, we, we really see all that purple dot is uh, is moving towards the the red uh, points. Um, yeah. On the four, what is very interesting with rectified flow is that you can see that uh, it's very. Uh, the neural network learns really like the uh, the shorter the shortest path or the linear path between the uh, input on the output, or maybe from one distribution from the base distribution to the target distribution. But uh, yeah, for example, uh, this cluster do not connect to that cluster. It's really like the shorter path, uh, and that's why they are uh, so powerful, even though they are very simple uh, to implement. Okay, and finally, when we are done, so we've tr we've plotted uh, the, po the the points, we've plotted the lines between them, we can uh, save the image. So I really hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, uh, please leave a thumbs up. It's really helpful. And subscribe for more content related to uh, diffusion models uh, and to machine learning in more general.